Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Today we're going to be building our next generation heavy lifter uh, in hopes that we'll be able to do something to take this uh, Zenith Blue 4 uh, capsule in AJ-10 stage uh, out in a couple laps around the moon. So uh, I'm going to be speeding all of this up and trying to give commentary. So here we go. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is try to set up a uh, initial upper stage. This is going to be hopefully responsible for rounding out our orbit and uh, getting us transferred out. Uh, first, I'm going to start out with these uh, 5200 series engines and get them all outfitted with a little hydrazine in the tank. I'm not really happy with the Delta V figures there, so I'm going to poke around and have a lot of trouble on these Agena D's. It won't let me upgrade the part and keep it selected. So right back to the 5200 series we go. We're going with four of them. Our previous uh, KR-1 only used two of those on the upper stage. So now for our, uh, I don't know, our first largest stage. Let's we'll size that up. We're gonna be going with the new E-1 engine that we just unlocked uh, a little bit ago and spending a lot of money to get it uh, made available to us. Decided we'd taper out this tank, make it look all pretty with the cryo orange there on the bottom, and stretch it out to that rated bird time of 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Now for a primary stage, or a launch stage, we'll go ahead and build out a big tube underneath that. And my plan here was to do five of these E1 engines. Uh, they're pretty incredible, actually. Uh, they seem to have a lot better specs than the H1 engines. I'm going to go ahead and get these side tanks and decide then that it's easier to put these on the 90 and line them up like this. Size them in, adjust our utilization, adjust our main tank. That looks weird. I don't know what's up with that disconnect there, but all right. Again, trying to get them to the rated burn time of 2 minutes 45 seconds. We'll play with some utilization and decide we need another core under there. Now, all of this still doesn't give us the necessary delta V that we need. We're at like 12,000 meters per second. I would like a lot more than that. So uh, I'm just going to strap on four more of these E1s and a couple of these side tanks. Uh, max out our center tank to get uh, our burn time. We are way over our tonnage. We'll deal with that later. Uh, I've named this rocket lovingly the Omega-1. I'm open to suggestions for better names. But now we're going to test fly it. So we'll take us out here onto the launch pad and let everything settle in and set those boosters alight. All right, ignition looks good. Take the clamps away. And not only are we over the tonnage limit for our launch pad, we are over the tonnage limit for our avionics. So part of this test flight is to determine exactly how much that's going to affect us and uh, exactly how long it takes us to get avionics control unlocked. This is by far the biggest rocket I've made in this series so far, obviously. They're just going to keep getting bigger and better until we just have to do satellite contracts to make money. In which case I will probably go back to using that uh, trusty RA-8 rocket. That thing, um, I think it's failed less than the KR-1. Anyway, we're up uh, about 200 some odd meters per second. And we're just going to go ahead and put that launch tower separation down here, right after stage set. Ah, oh, there we go. Avionics controls unlocked. So now I am free to go ahead and start making this gravity turn and do our progressive roll towards orbit. All right, and I'm going to go back and speed this up in post. So eh, enjoy the launch footage. So all this is sped up to about eight times regular speed. Um, the gravity turns a little bit lazy and the rocket starts to oscillate a bit. It takes me a second or two, but I realize we actually do have one engine complete failure. Yep, there it is. And one engine on a loss of thrust. At separation there we had two failures and one loss of thrust. There goes our launch escape tower. And this upper stage again is a single E1 booster. Uh, this one actually performs incredibly well and does the uh, bulk of pushing us towards orbit. I think it was the high perigee that we got from our launch stage that allows us to just ride this straight on the horizon. 
And as we switch out to the uh, 2200 stages, we can actually push our nose down a bit to help circularize that orbit at uh, well, 230 something by 168. And a little delta V check here reveals that uh, between this stage and the AJ-10 upper stage, we've got about enough to round the moon. Um, maybe even enough to hit orbit and get us home. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is just plot a node. I know we're way off plane, so there's no chance of actually hitting the moon. But I'd just like to see about what the delta V requirement is from this particular orbit, which is lopsided as hell, but about my standard. 200 something by 100 you know more than 150 or so and just uh, see it about how much delta V we, it would take uh, really the answer is always going to be about 31 to 3200 depending on where and how fast you want to get there I'm typically pretty lazy about this stuff uh, yeah 395 I'll just check that 393 or 395 somewhere in there but yeah 3125 all in all I think we'd have that with enough to slow to an orbit and then launch ourselves into a free return trajectory so that is the plan all right so we're gonna get this back to the VAB and in there I'm gonna start replicating the launch clamps and adjusting the fuel in the tanks to be uh, filled in at the pad so we can meet our weight launch requirements which there it is. So then we'll uh, get a nice paint job selected. We're gonna go with this uh, Saturn style and that'll do it. So I present to you the Omega One Zenith Blue Four. Until next time guys, I will see you later.